Well, hey everybody, it's Atlan. How's it going? And I'm here for another adventure, this time in Kentucky. Again, I'm back in the Red River Gorge, uh, one of my favorite places to come and visit. And, you know, it's so close to my house, it's only three hours away, so uh, I love coming here. And today I'm here in a, a part of the gorge that I have never checked out before. I'm here on the Clifty Wilderness side, which is the northeast portion of the park. And there's all kinds of things to see over here that I've never seen before. Creation Falls, Copperus Falls, numerous arches, Eagle Point Buttress, all these things. So that is my uh, goal this weekend to just kind of explore, take it easy. I'm not going to try to crush big, huge miles because my knees are still a little messed up from my last trip. I'm just here to explore and see stuff I haven't seen before, camp out, and uh, it's going to be fun. I've got my hammock, I've got a super light pack for this one, and I'm just, I'm just here to have fun and explore and, and have a good time. So my first scenic spot for this evening is to get down to Creation Falls, something I've never seen. <laughs> All the times I've been here to the gorge, I've never seen Creation Falls or Rock Bridge, very iconic parts of the area. Now they've been getting a lot of rain down here so in the past couple days, so my hope is Creation Falls will be running really really well. That would be cool. I'd like to see more than a trickle, but I'll take whatever I can get. Really trying to take it easy on my knees this weekend because uh, I pretty much destroyed them in Virginia. Not really sure what all the factors were that happened with that, but um, man, they've been hurting. Seriously, like Jurassic Park back here. <laughs> it's so like, just the plants are huge, the rocks are huge. It's like it feels prehistoric. It's amazing. It's this awesome trail. This the whole gorge is like this, but uh, this is seems kind of different from some of the things I've seen before. This is sweet. I really like this. Looks like you can get on top of the arch, but uh, I'm not going to attempt that today. <laughs> Even though there's there's people here who could probably help me, but uh, don't want to hurt myself the first hour in. Well, that was freaking awesome. I got halfway down the trail, and it just started thunderstorming on me. Just dumping, dumping on me. So I booked it back to my car the half mile in the rain the pouring rain I got back to my car i'm completely soaked my clothes are soaked my gear is soaked i don't see how i'm gonna be able to sleep outside tonight because i didn't bring sleep clothes this this is what i brought is what i'm wearing and maybe this is where my ultralight loadout plan has has already failed because i don't have any contingencies my car is the contingency <laughs> So I, I, I might be sleeping in here tonight. 
This is not what I wanted to do at all. But if I can't get these clothes dry, you know, it gets chilly at night back there in the woods. And um, I don't want to sleep in wet clothes. <sighs> you know, I, I should have followed my intuition because I knew there was a chance of storms. And the sky was really gray. But I thought, sure, it was going to pass over. And it just started sprinkling. And I was like, eh, okay, just a sprinkle, no big deal. And then it just ripped loose, man. I tried to take cover under some thick canopy, but it didn't really even help. It, it reached a point where it was so coming down so hard. And I am just drenched. I am drenched from head to toe. Socks, shoes, shorts, underwear, everything. All right, so I'm just trying to get my stuff dried out. Uh, I'm sitting here in the car. I got the air on full blast. And I'm just putting my clothes over the vents to see if I can get them dried. You know, they're moisture wicking stuff. So uh, in theory, they're supposed to wick away moisture and dry really quickly. But um, yeah, yeah. <coughs> oh, man. <coughs> what an adventure so far, huh? It's not how I planned it. All right, so I'm back at it again. I ran the car for like 45 minutes, tried to dry out my shirt and stuff as best I could. It's still soaking wet <laughs> and it's kind of cold, but it's not supposed to be too bad tonight. Like I think 65 is the low and that's what it is right now. Like it's not gonna get any cooler than it is. And what I'll do is once I'll get camp set up, I'll take this off, throw my melee on, let the shirt air out some more and hopefully it'll be dry in the morning. Uh, I'm only gonna be like a half a mile from the car. If it gets too unbearable, I'll just pack everything up and go back to my car. I'm trying to find a spot on the guy that I have marked here. Um, go see if I can find it. Well, I've been scouting for a while and I have not seen any campsites that I would consider legal um, nothing that's far enough off the trail to really be considered a legal site not that anybody would probably do anything about it tonight but <clears throat> I want to stay legal and oh that's pretty over there oh my gosh um, I don't know and I'm damp it's damp and wet and I'm really tempted just to go back to the car tonight, sleep in the Jeep, because I get a fresh start in the morning and have dry stuff. <clears throat> I'm really leaning towards that. But look at this. Uh, you probably can't see it very well. Fog all through the gorge there. Man, it's beautiful. This is that lookout that I ran past when it was pouring a down rain on me. Look at this. Oh man. Wow. Holy cow. Wow. Wow. Yeah, I really don't want to go back all the way down there if I don't find anything. Well, it's settled now. The car it is. I got like a quarter mile down the trail and I was looking at sites and talking to you guys but I saw this cloud coming at that lookout and I was like man that cloud looks low sure as I said that it just ripped loose like it was harder than that first rain like oh my gosh and now it's really cool and I'm soaked to the bone I cannot believe this God does not want me to camp tonight. Maybe he doesn't want me to get eaten by a bear. I don't know. But this is this is where I'm sleeping. The vehicle. I gotta get some dry clothes on. I am freezing and wet. <coughs> <coughs> oh. Alright, so <coughs> I finally some light in here finally changed back into my dry clothes the only other pair of clothes I have jeans and a t-shirt 
Uh, my hiking clothes are just, man, I don't even know if they'll be dry by morning at this point. <clears throat> uh, so let's see. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm stuck at the trailhead. Um, I don't know. I could go somewhere else, I guess, but basically my option is to sleep here or, um, <clears throat> drive three hours home right now. Which I really don't want to do. I want to stick it out another day at least. <clears throat> Something I didn't tell you guys. I've been battling a cold slash um, sinus infection. I don't know what. I felt terrible for the last two days. I decided I was going to do this trip no matter what. No matter how I felt, I was going to push through it. And I think just being out in this dampness. And I just ran a half mile back to the car. And now I'm out, out of breath and I keep coughing. <clears throat> it's really bad. <laughs> I feel awful. Like I feel, I feel terrible. Like I, the last thing I really want to do right now is sleep in my car. Uh, it's going to be cramped and hot and uncomfortable. There's more waves of storms coming, so I can't even crack the windows open. There's at least three more lines back in Lexington that look like they're going to hit <clears throat> sometime in the next hour or so. So I guess I could crack the, crack the windows and if it starts raining, close them. But man, I am now officially the only car here in the lot. Everybody else left. There was two or three families that went out as soon as I got out the second time. And they all got out to do a day hike down to the fall or an evening hike down to the falls. And I was like, what are they doing? But, uh, you know, they're just a normal, like, tourist clothes and stuff. And they all head out. <clears throat> they all got caught in that rainstorm that I got caught in. They all came back just completely drenched. There was a couple that, that were just... Phew, Man, they're just like holy cow we're just soaked but you know they're they're probably going to go back to their house or their rental cottage or their hotel or wherever they're staying and they'll be very comfortable and nice take a hot shower and feel great uh so if i want to do that i got to drive three hours to to, to to do that i'm not staying in a hotel uh, so i guess i'm sleeping in here man oh man I just couldn't find any good camp spots, and by the time I was ready to turn around and walk back to the car, it let loose, and man, I was afraid my camera was going to get ruined. I was trying to keep it covered, <clears throat> but it's it's working fine, so thank God for that. Well, good morning. It's day two. <laughs> it's a new day. Uh, man, yesterday was interesting, but I ended up last night driving up to Oxier Ridge Trailhead just because I wanted to be in a, an area that I was more familiar with where there were some actual vehicles um, the trailhead I was at there was nobody and it was desolate and I didn't feel particularly safe sleeping in my car even though I, I'm sure I would have been fine but I just had funny feelings uh, so I went up to Oxford Ridge Trailhead, slept in my car for the night. It's a good thing I did because it rained more. Uh, as soon as I got up there, it poured again for a good hour. Um, unfortunately, my clothes are still wet this morning. They're soaked. I drove over here to the other side of the park. Uh, I'm now over by the Osborne Bend area because I want to check out Copper's Falls and, and some, some of the falls over here and things. My, my clothes are wet. I, I've got to get them dried out. If the sun would come out, I could just lay them on the car and dry them. The visitor center's closed, which is really weird. I thought, I thought sure, they'd be open now. Uh, but there's, there's nobody here. So I have no way to really dry my clothes unless I drive somewhere. If there's somewhere nearby that has a laundromat or something, I can throw these in a dryer for... For a little bit but I'm, not, I'm really not sure what to do uh, I'm also trying to meet up with my buddy Jason who is supposed to be coming down to meet up with me uh, unfortunately I don't have any cell service here at this place so trying to reach him is going to be interesting <laughs> it's like today is going to be full of more challenges but it's okay because we're in the Red River Gorge and all is good Okay, I got the semi-dry, wet clothes back on. I held them over the front of my uh, car vents to try to get them dried out. They're still damp, but it's okay. Sun's out. It's gonna get it's 
gonna get hot today. I think like 85 or something. So uh, drive back down the road. I'm gonna go try to find Copper's Falls. But first, I wanted to show you guys this behind me. It's called Bell Falls. And it's literally off the road, just as you come down here, the main road. Uh, you can pull off, there's a little parking area to pull off here, and you can walk down to the falls. So we're gonna walk down and check it out, because it's a really cool falls and it's running really well. So let's go check it out. Ooh. Oh yeah. Nice one. Check it out. Beautiful. And that's just an easy little hop, skip, and jump down right from the road, so you don't even have to hike to it. So, kind of cool if you're unable to really do any kind of distance hiking, you can still check out this cool water. You can, you can see it from your car, so that's pretty sweet. Pretty nice waterfall. I like it. Okay, so we're now on this unof unofficial trail to Copper's Falls. It's marked on all kinds of maps and everything but it is not officially recognized as a trail by the forest service so dark back here even with the sun shining pretty brightly it is dark these woods are thick love it I don't think I've ever had birds try to chase me out of their territory before. They're like uh, sparrows or something, little tiny birds. They're cute, but man, they're mad. <laughs> they're, they are mad at me. I'm moving. I'm out of here. <laughs> it's funny. So the trail gets a little weird in places it kind of splits off. I think if you just hug this creek, you're fine. Um, there'd be places where it kind of goes up along the bank. And I think that's for if it's really high water, which it's not, I'm so surprised. After all that rain last night, just past a couple of people, they said the falls is really running hard though. So that's cool. But uh, yeah, so if you just kind of hug the creek, um, I'm following Gaia, so I have tracks already that I'm using, but uh, I think just hug the creek and you're good. Check this rock out. It's like a perfect triangle. <laughs> or pyramid. But what I want you to see is this weathering. All these little holes. There's actually fossils in here. Fossil stones. This is a great geology lesson right here. Super neat. So cool. 
错。Water's flowing right down into that rock, in those rocks. I don't know if that goes down like under the rocks and then back out, it must. Over some underground cave. Oh man, that's awesome. Nice camp spot here. I'm gonna mark this one. This is beautiful. Okay, this is a really, really nice campsite, and man, you could hammock camp in quite a few areas right here. I found the perfect spot. There's two trees right here. There's one here and one here, and it's right next to the water. You've got like a little waterfall going over there, the gurgling of the creek. Man, beautiful. But yeah, it looks like, it looks like this has been used quite a bit too, because firing's pretty established but wow and this garbage right here is what makes me so angry look at this um, there was a foul word carved into the tree right here somebody tried to scratch it out which really makes it worse you're doing more damage to the tree I know you don't want to see vulgarity in the woods but don't do any more damage to the tree than there already is and just remember people when you come out here to a place like this as this beautiful, it's also very used a lot. <laughs> Let's just say that. Leave no trace. Leave no trace. Don't let anyone know that you were here. This is not Copperas Falls, so don't stop here if you see this. Just keep going. That's a neat little fall, and I don't think it's named. A little rapid. Um, but Copperas is much bigger. There it is, Copperas Falls. Worth the hike, about two miles-ish in, so it's about a four mile out and back. Pretty impressive, gorgeous actually. So I was upset about all that rain last night. This makes it worth it right here. <laughs> oh my gosh. Unbelievable. That's awesome. Borders as big as cars.
All right, so I'm back at the car and uh, grabbed a little lunch and get my stuff packed up for the hike up to Eagles Point, which I will hopefully find. Should be able to. But uh, man, that hike to Coppers was great. It was nice not having the pack on. I'll admit it was great on my knee to not have to have that pack on. So this is a little bit shorter, but I think it's kind of like straight up for like a mile. <laughs> so <clears throat> we'll see what happens. If we find it, we if we find it. If we don't, we don't. Uh, and that's just kind of how it's going to have to be. So there were a lot of cool campsites down the path to Coppers there. If I really want to stay at this area, I could camp anywhere down there, pretty much. Just throw a hammock up. But uh, let's see what we can find. Find this Eagle's Point. Let's go. Okay, so the trail down, you just branch right off Osborne Bend. You're going to see an obvious veer to the right. You'll take that Y to the right. Be very careful. You're going to come to a campsite. Be extremely careful because right over the hump where that campsite is, there is like a chimney. I don't see a name for it or whatever, but it's, I looked down there, it looked like it was 15 feet down. If you fell in there, it would not be good. Um, I don't know if you, if you could get around to the other side because it looked like it, it was an outcrop kind of cave thing. I didn't go look. But uh, anyway, if you're night hiking especially, be very, very aware of that. Um, and then you come down, you just keep branching down until you get next to the river. And then you'll be like walking on the beach. It's like all sandy. And I'm literally right next to the water. Uh, I just came on my first cave here. The caves are closed, so don't go in them because of the bat nose syndrome, white nose syndrome. So don't mess with them. Another cool little cave. I guess I'm on the right path. I honestly don't know. I'm a little sketched out by this path, honestly. I almost turned around a couple times. Because uh, if you slip off the rocks, you're going straight into the water. And that would really suck with all my gear. <laughs> and alone. Uh, I'm going to get up to the base of this. I think I see what is Eagle's Point Buttress, and I'm going to get up to the base of it. And if I just don't think it's doable, uh, I'm not doing it tonight. I'll, I'll go back to the car and I'll figure something out. Okay, so there's the popular SpongeBob Square Rock, as it's been named. So I'm going the right way. There's a couple campsites up in here. There's people camping with family. And there's another really nice campsite next to that. Um, I don't know. We'll see. I'm gonna keep going for a little bit. Check him out. Baby dinosaur. Well, hey folks, what's going on? I'm in a different spot. You're probably wondering what the heck's going on. A little bit of a time warp. Uh, you know, I got on that trail. I got to the SpongeBob Rock and I completely lost the path. I don't know where it went. Um, I was completely sketched out, honestly, by that trail. Didn't like it, didn't feel safe. I just, with my bum knee and no cell service, I just felt like that was not the place to be tonight. It's like that same premonition I had last night where it was like, this is not where you're supposed to be. I felt it again, so I followed it. So, I bailed on Eagle Point Buttress. <clears throat> so I bailed on Eagle Point Buttress. And I'm back at a spot that I said I wasn't going to do again. <laughs> this trip. Which that's Oxier Ridge. I'm back at Oxier Ridge. And that's really because I know this area. I've been in this area a lot. And I know there's cell service up here. And I know how to get back to my car really quickly if necessary. So it's more of a safety thing just being smart um, don't take stupid risks just because if you have a bad feeling about something you know listen to that so I'm hoping to get out to a spot tonight that I've been to 
It's actually in a trip video I did a while back, years ago. Uh, it is my favorite spot in the gorge. I really hope it's not taken because it is amazing. And if I get out there tonight, well, I'm taking you with me, of course. Guys, I'm so happy. I found my spot. I found that hammock spot that I was here at several years ago. Didn't know if the trees would even still be here, but they are. And I just, I got it to myself. It's just me and the lizards up here and the road noise. You can hear the motorcycles roaring through the valley down there. The road's just down there, but this view is a million dollars. I already put the hammock up because I didn't want to mess with it. So it is good to go. I don't even know if I'm gonna do a tarp tonight because it's not supposed to rain at all. Come here, let me let me take you up here. <clears throat> oh there's a fire ring here. Let's lighten it up a little bit. Fire ring here. But I want you to see this view. Unfortunately, the camera is not gonna do it justice because <laughs> you're in the middle of this. I can't even explain it. This is awesome. Man, I love this spot. And this time of year, this is the last time I camped here too. Uh, I think I was here in August last time, but you can literally watch the sun go down on this side, go around the earth, and it'll come up over here on the other side. So sunset will be over here tonight. Sunrise will be over there. This spot is killer. This spot is awesome. And you can tell it's very heavily well used. Let's look at all the stinking trash. I'll try to collect some of this and put it in my trash bag when, before I leave. This makes me sick. Definitely time for some food. Time to start cooking it up. Huh, sounds good. Chicken gumbo from my favorites. Good to go. Oh, and I have another little goodie. Check that out. Country boy made a New England IPA. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm scared I'm gonna burn myself out in the back country one of these days. Okay, 15 minutes. Hang out. I honestly can't believe that I was able to bail on that hike that I was doing, get in the car, drive all the way over here another 45 minutes, hike up that road, find this spot, and get camp set up. And I'm just in time for dinner. It's uh, a little after six. That's pretty good. I was booking it. I was sweating. It's hot up here. The only, the only thing bad about being up, up here in these ridges is there's no water. None. So you got to pack it all in, which I, I did. I got plenty of water and other liquid. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad, glad I grabbed that from the cooler. Beautiful up here. Quiet up here now. Should have a gorgeous sunset. That's what I'm hoping for. We did last time I was here. Gorgeous, gorgeous sunset and sunrise. Actually, both of them were beautiful. So usually when I come down here to the gorge, I end up getting Country Boy because it's a, a local brewery, and uh, I've never really been a big fan of their beers. I, usually I, I grab some because it's 
they're good and cold after a hike any beer is good um, especially a craft being able to support a craft brewery is, is awesome um, they have a key lime it's called key lime cougar bait that's a really good one but it has to be ice cold but uh so i went to the carry out down here cns and uh yesterday and I looked in the, the fridge section and I saw this New England and I was like, you've got to be kidding me. Holy crap. So I snatched that up and then I ended up going to um, Skybridge Station to grab some food before getting to the trail and they had it on tap. So I tasted it and it's good. It is actually really good. It's very tasty. All right, I want you all to witness. This is my trash bag that I brought for my trash. I'm gonna use it to get all this trash it's in this fire pit. I'm gonna clean it out here. I'm gonna pack it out tomorrow. Please, people, when you come up here, leave no trace. This stuff doesn't burn. Plastic does not burn in fires. You can't just throw it in, in your fire pit. It's not gonna do anything. Especially metal. <laughs> metal pieces. What the heck? Oh, man. But I will take out as much as I can because I only have about a two and a half mile hike back to the car, so I will do my part. Yes, this is a good one. It's tasty. Cheers. Okay. This chicken gumbo smells amazing. And I got my drink. Oh man. I'm so scared I'm gonna spill it, knock it over. And I, you would literally see a grown man cry. So I just keep drinking it so it doesn't get knocked over or spilled. All right, I'm gonna crack open the um, gumbo. Whew, man, that is hot. Ooh, it's very watery. Mmm. Man. Man, oh man. It does have a spice to it. It didn't even have a spice meter on it like the other foods. Well, it's got a kick. All right, I'm gonna sit here and enjoy this and um, take all this in. Well, the sun's going down quickly, so that means uh, I'm going to probably start getting ready to go to sleep. I'm exhausted from today's adventure. It's been an awesome day of exploring. Uh, Copper's Falls was amazing. Uh, my failed attempt at Eagle Point was fun. An adventure for sure. Just it's been a great day. No rain, sunny, warm. Beautiful camp spot, man. I can't ask for anything better than that. And hopefully I'll see some amazing stars tonight. Just laying in my hammock with no tarp. Zero percent chance of rain. Let's hope that's correct. Because <laughs> my tarp is like buried in my bag, so. Uh, yeah. There's a lot of people camping and I can hear people all around me. This is fun though, man. from the hammock <clears throat> man it's beautiful today perfectly clear and the sun is shining a little cool I was a little chilly throughout the night it would have been nice to have an under quilt I would have slept a little better oh but it's about uh, 7 7 a.m. right now the sun was up at like the sky started lighting up at like 5.30. I looked up. I was like, I can't believe it. The sun was starting to rise. And then I must have fell back asleep. <laughs> and, 
it's super bright now, so it'll warm up quick. Uh, I'm gonna make some coffee and uh, and probably get out of here and head home. the plan Ooh, beautiful <sighs> oh man Won't do that much, and then we'll have enough for coffee. Okay, I'm trying a Mountain House granola breakfast with blueberries. Never had this before, so figured I'd try it. Tim Watson swears by it. I love granola. I'm a granola, granola fan. Oh man. This actually might not suck. Look at that beautifulness. So some people have asked why I use uh, an additional filter in the GSI. And it's really just for convenience of cleanup because these things I find are hard to clean out. These GSI things, you, you can rinse them out, but then you just use up more water. And if you're limited on water, then that's kind of a problem. But uh, if you bring this, one of these little, I think this is number two size filter, then I just put it back in the Ziploc that I put the coffee in, right there. And that's how I dispose of it. And it doesn't leak in my pack or anything. All right, pour over coffee in the gorge. Good morning, gorge. Mm. Good morning, gorgeous. Man, that's good. That's a uh, mountain house granola and blueberries was fantastic. I killed that thing. I ate that so fast. It was awesome. And the cool thing about that is you can use hot or cold water. So I just poured in the cold water and it was just like eating cereal. And uh, fabulous. Really, really tasty. So I want to tell you guys my really strange UFO story from last night. <laughs> That's all I can really call it. Um, I was laying in the hammock about 10.30 last night. You know, it was twilight and the stars were popping out. And the sky was just popping with stars. And I just was staring at 
all these different lights in the sky, all this, these stars. And the, right directly above me, there was um, kind of a brighter light. And I thought it was a planet. I didn't whip out my phone to check. I was like, oh, I think it's Mars. I, I don't know what planet it is. But it was, it was brighter than the others. And the more I, I stared at this light... I, I watched it and it started changing positions. It was doing these little micro increments and I thought it was just me swinging in the hammock. I'm like, okay. And no, I was not drunk or anything. Uh, you know, because I'm looking at the other stars and things in the sky and they're all stationary, but there's this one light and it's doing, it's going like this. It's in the same general position but it was moving, it was moving in like these micro increments, but very quickly. It wasn't a drone, it wasn't a plane. I have no idea what the heck it was. So I watched that for about 45 minutes, just watched this thing moving in the sky. And then the more I, I you know, my eyes got acclimated to the sky, I, more stars popped out. And then I saw a couple smaller ones that looked like stars, but these smaller lights were doing the same thing. Moving, moving. They would kind of hover and then they jerk. They were moving. These were moving lights. I have no idea what they were, guys. I have no clue. I, I'm not one for, I'm not gonna say I believe in UFOs or anything like that, because I really don't. Uh, never have but you know if anyone else was camping out here they had to have seen some of those lights moving because there were there were at least I counted at least three that were doing that moving micro increment thing all right I just want to document this and you're not gonna be able to see it through the phone camera but there is a light in the sky directly above my head and I've been watching it. Thought it was a planet. The more I watch it, it literally is moving in the sky. It's moving. I'm watching it right now. It's going back and forth, doing like a figure eight. Oh, there was a shooting star that just went past it. It's the craziest thing. Um, it's not a drone, it's not a plane. I legit don't know what that light is or why it keeps moving like that. It is a cra it's been in that same position, but it, it moves. It's moving again. Absolutely insane. I have no idea what that is. It's weird. So I don't know if there's any, uh, if you guys have been to the gorge, if you've ever noticed some strange aerial phenomenon going on in the sky. It kind of freaked me out a little bit. And then finally I reached a point where I was like, I'm too tired, I can't keep staring at these lights, I'm going to sleep. And I just... Zipped up the hammock and prayed I didn't get abducted. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. It was weird. Um, I'm sure there's a logical explanation for it, but uh, I've never seen anything like that in my life. And I've stared at this, you know, countless nights camping, staring at the sky for hours. And I've never seen, you know, I've seen satellites, which I did see satellites last night. I saw, some sh I saw a shooting star, or at least two shooting stars. Um, and I know what those look like. I know what satellites look like. They're just kind of like a, a tiny little dot that just goes across the, the sky really pretty quickly. And you can tell when you see a, a uh, you can tell when you see like the ISS space station or space junk or something like that. You, you can tell what that is. This was something different. This was, you know, it was in the same general vicinity for 45 minutes, but constantly moving it would it would zip down 
Sit back up. Down, move. Do like a figure eight a couple times. Literally, I saw it do like a figure eight. I don't know, guys. Um, <laughs> maybe we're going to learn something uh, the government's been hiding from us for a long time. I don't know. But that's my morning coffee story. Okay, it's just after 9, and it's already blazing hot up here, so I'm going to blow this joint and uh, I think head home for the day. You guys are my witness, though. I did clean up this trash from this fire pit. I actually got some trash down from the further end, down near where I was. Um, got as much as I could. There was used toilet paper down there, which I did not touch. But um, I got everything else. The metal pieces, there was some glass in here. Um, I can only do my part until someone else comes along, but uh, leave no trace. In my spot, you never tell I was here. That's the way it should be. All right, guys, back at the vehicle. It's hot. This place is a madhouse. It is full parking lot, 10 a.m. in the morning. So I'm getting out of here. I'm heading out. <clears throat> I've had a good weekend, did what I wanted to do. And uh, I will be back, of course. It's the gorge. Thanks for coming along with me. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. Talk to you guys real soon.